morning, good morning, good morning. Mr. Warwick is back. Happy Money Monday, Secured Entrepreneurs. Some of you showed out this morning. Three of you sent me a text message, and you all know Mr. Warwick's on the West Coast, okay? So it was early. Telling me, oh, Miss Aurora, I was just watching Coach Stormy on the Wake Up and Win, and, and she happened to say that the co-founder of LinkedIn said that by 2034, the 9 to 5 job was going to uh, be extinct. You know, I, I said, okay, I, I need to watch the video. I watched the video, okay? So Miss Aurora watches the video, and, and Coach Stormy does say that she woke up this morning to this notification that the co-founder of LinkedIn said that by 2034, nine to five jobs would be uh, extinct. However, this statement by the co-founder was put out back in August, August of this year, August, 2024, where it stated that true indeed, yes, the co-founder of LinkedIn did state that he predicts that the nine to five job would just be put to death by 2034. <laughs> okay. And so of course, we know it's not going to be every industry. It's not going to be every industry. But in this video, Miss Aurora is going to get into what it is that the entrepreneur needs to do to prepare their business now for this time at which you're not going to be able to stay on your nine to five. You're not going to be able to work a job to support your business. There's going to be things that you need to do today, today, right now, because guess what? It doesn't matter who the next president will be. It doesn't matter which party is in power. It does not matter. As an entrepreneur, you still have the responsibility to bring in income. You still have the responsibility to build a business and protect it. You still have a responsibility to yourself and the people that you care about. You have a responsibility to the people that you serve. Okay. So let's get with it. Can we do it? All right. So for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you build six and seven figure tax free businesses. You heard that right. Stick around because we know that this is the secured entrepreneur movement. <music> Okay, first, here it is, Secured Entrepreneurs. LinkedIn co-founder predicts the death of nine to five jobs by 2034. How AI and gig economy will reshape the workforce. According to LinkedIn co-founder Reed Hoffman, the traditional nine to five job might soon become a thing of the past. A recent viral video of Hoffman shows him predicting that the nine to five work model will be extinct by 2034. I'm actually not upset about that. Secured entrepreneurs, how many of you are actually upset about that? I mean, are you are you really happy waking up every morning, putting on your clothes, your good cologne, showering, taking time to get yourself together? You may have children, you gotta get them together. They gotta go somewhere, then you gotta go somewhere. You gotta be around people you don't even wanna be around. Hello, yes, thank you, thank you, darling. <laughs> it's a real thing, right? Okay. He believes the gig economy and the rise of artificial intelligence will replace the traditional full-time job. I'm not, I'm not really seeing a problem here. <laughs> Hoffman argues that the workforce is undergoing a profound transformation. You may not do a lot of your work fully as an employee, Hoffman explains. You may actually be working in the gig economy or you may have two or three gigs. He notes that this shift offers increased productivity and flexibility opportunities, but creates uncertainty around stable employment. Okay, that part is true. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm the queen of gigs. And when the gig dries up, well, there it is, because here's the deal. You're not going to be able to collect unemployment because you were just doing maybe a 1099 gig. You were doing a gig that was not really a, a full-time employment that would warrant you being eligible for unemployment. So that that is something there. Neil Taparia, an entrepreneur and investor, shares Hoffman's sentiments and posted on X that we should probably listen to his latest prediction, referring to the death of the nine to five work model. Taparia pointed out that Hoffman's past predictions have turned out true, including, uh oh, he predicted social networks would change the world. In 1997, he predicted the rise of social media. He saw the sharing economy coming early Airbnb investor. 
He called the AI revolution years before chat GPT. Not everyone shares Hoffman's beliefs, however. Jay Zagorski, a professor of markets, public policy, and law at Boston University's Questrom School of Business, told the national news that while he agrees with some of Hoffman's views, he doesn't believe full-time or traditional nine-to-five jobs will go away completely. Instead, he sees a continuation of what's happening right now, where there's a split between flexible time jobs and fixed time jobs. Secured entrepreneurs, which, what do you think? What do you think? All of these jobs from cleaners to air traffic control workers all share the same common feature. When the shift is over, the person is done with work, he said. These jobs are not going to disappear, no matter what the pronouncements from Silicon Valley entrepreneurs. I 100% agree, like I just stated, it's not going to be every industry. It, it cannot be every industry. There's, there's just too many things that a human does have to touch. There's just too many things that a human being has to be involved in to make things work. While it's difficult to tell what the future may hold, there's no denying that AI is replacing some traditional jobs or at least dramatically changing them. As it becomes more integrated into various industries, how employees perform their jobs changes. Workers must become proficient in utilizing AI to stay competitive as the job market adapts. However, while AI may disrupt the traditional work model, it also offers opportunities for growth and innovation. For instance, AI can enhance productivity and create new job types that require different skills. As Hoffman suggests, the future workforce may not be tied to a single employer, but will likely participate in a more fluid gig-based economy. No matter what happens in the future, current and past technological evolutions show us that we need to learn to adapt. Workers need to be prepared to learn new skills and embrace new opportunities that may come their way. Oh, I 100% agree with that. Secured entrepreneurs, what say you? So right now I want to get into about six or seven things that the entrepreneur needs to be doing right now today. If in fact, you know that you are not in an industry that simply cannot go away. You, you, you're, you're in an industry that you're working while you're working your business part-time, but you, you will be facing something to whereas AI could totally wipe you out. This is what you need to be doing. Let's get into it. All right, now secured entrepreneurs, let's have this serious talk. We know that here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement, we move differently over here. You see, we are a small community. The videos that we put out here in the movement, they're not going viral, <laughs> okay? <laughs> These platforms do not take too kindly to the information that is being shared here because it's for the it's for the better of humanity, okay? It's for the better of people who understand that their legacy is what it's about, right? So whenever Miss Aurora comes to you on, in these videos or when Miss Aurora comes live, either here or on TikTok where I'm over there having fun right now, okay? This is, we're talking about something international. What Miss Aurora is never really talking to you about anything that is uh, national. Mr. Aurora is always talking to you about something that you're going to be able to thrive in globally, okay? So the very first thing that Ms. Aurora wants to tell the entrepreneurs, and thank you for visiting, and please like this video, please subscribe to the channel so we can keep sharing this juice together, okay? We want to spread this word because this is serious. The very first thing that Ms. Aurora wants to tell the entrepreneurs that you will need to do like right now is learn how to leverage remote work and virtual teams, okay? Now, we know that Many of us are out here doing these gigs and things like that. But what's happening is that you are not leveraging remote work and creating virtual teams in the sense that you are working with people internationally. You are teaming up with people. Now, this is one of the things that I just told a gentleman last week who propositioned me for a service. I let him know that I, I no longer have interest in hiring somebody to do what they say they go that they, that they can do that to 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 do something that they said they can do. I'm paying the person. I'm following their instructions, but I get no results. So this person is not really being held accountable as a coach. Now I'm not talking about consulting because you know Mr. Roy does consulting. Two different things. This is a person who's a coach. 
and they want me to utilize their services. So I explained to the person that I've done this so many times with no results. And I'm talking following the instructions. I'm talking, come on now, raise your hand, raise your hand, come on. Uh, Mr. Roar's not the only one. We've been to all kinds of conferences, su summerses, you know, people's programs, all this stuff that has done all these things. It is time to now have a international virtual team. That's what Mr. Roar is trying to tell you. If you don't understand how to leverage remote work and virtual teams, you're going to be lost, lost simply because the people that you need to make your show go and flow will not be in, you know, the United States. I'm talking to people in the United States. Okay. But they may not always be here. You're going to need to be able to communicate with people in other countries who have exactly what you need, depending on what type of business you actually have. But if you are not thinking about your business internationally, I don't know what to say. I don't know about this empire that you're building. I don't know about this legacy that you're building because you have got to be seen all around the world. Just like you see your favorite music artists can go to another country where they don't even speak the language. They don't speak English, but they can sing every word in that song in English. You have to now think of yourself and your business in the very same manner. How is it that you're leveraging remote work and virtual teams? Now we know that we have, now Mr. Roar is not going to name any of these platforms because Mr. Roar doesn't get paid to name all these platforms, but we know what platforms are out here that we're using every day. We're using these platforms. Many people are using these platforms. They're getting gig workers. You know, I have a, a gentleman who does some video editing for me and, and he's done some of the thumbnails. You know, he's in Morocco. Okay. Even he knows he got to get on these platforms and he has to deal with people. He has to take gigs from people all over the world. He's just not relying on people to give him gigs in Morocco. Okay. So please understand the importance of that. So when this co-founder of LinkedIn is telling us this, he's saying something very real that what you don't understand is that we're using all of these technologies to connect with people. So if you're just, you know, going to this nine to five job and that's, and that's the end all be all for you, well, there's going to come a time where you will no longer be able to do that. And how many people do we see in these places and they're, and mostly senior people now, mostly senior people, Mr. Rora has told you many times. Okay. And, and Mr. Rora is not a Walmart shopper, but, but when Walmart first came on the scene, you know, everybody went to Walmart, right? And who did you see at the door? A senior person asking you to see your receipt. How dangerous is that for a senior person, for somebody who, you know, uh, is not in their right mind at the particular time that they get asked and some stuff pops off and now you're not. I, I even saw a, a 70 plus year old security guard at the Macy's at the mall. Okay. I'm like, what is this man really going to do? What is this? What is he really going to do to some, uh, what does he really want to do at 70? Let's go here. Okay. I don't know, but Mr. Rora is telling you, please, at this very moment in time, if you are not doing your business on a full-time basis and you are still relying on a nine to five job to assist you in building that business, start exploring your options to leverage remote work and virtual teams internationally. Okay. That's the first thing Mr. Rora is going to share here. Here's the second thing I'm going to tell you here. And again, this is not anything national. This is not anything, you know, in the 50 states. Okay. We're talking international here. You have got to invest in creating digital products and online courses that meet a need internationally. No joke. No joke. Because what, what's happening here? This is speeding things up for not only your business, but for other people. Okay. Once again, you can't expect that everybody is going to be comfortable speaking English or reading English. Okay. Many of us have traveled to many places and what we found out and what we continuously find out is that for the most part, it's the United States that, you know, United States citizens don't really speak several languages, but when you get out into these other countries, you will find that these people are speaking three to five different languages. So not only are they speaking their language, they're speaking English and they're speaking other languages. Okay. Forgive King David. He's back there. Y'all know he's 16 years old. So if you hear him hacking and all that stuff, he's old. Okay. They are speaking other languages. They have not stunted their growth. So when we see them in places, especially these people who do tourism, 
we see him speaking three and four different languages to people who get on the, the bus to go on the tour and all that stuff like that. Okay. So start thinking about investing in creating your digital products and online courses to meet an international audience. And again, you are leveraging remote work and virtual teams to get this done. You are going to need to hire somebody more than likely who actually speaks these languages because sometimes as we know, you can get up on these things and, and tap into English and then they give you the other language. And, and for the most part, many of the people who speak these languages, uh, they're not speaking it in a clean way. Like, like, so, like sometimes you hear somebody say, uh, like I got some Spanish friends who say, no, that's Spanglish. You know, like they're speaking like a slang version of, of Spanish. And so they don't really know what the heaven you're saying, <laughs> you know, like there, there's things like that. So you, you know that you want to get with the people who actually speak this language. This is maybe their native language. They're going to know how to translate this digital product, this, uh, online course, things like that. Please take this seriously. This is an international situation. You are going to have to deal with the world, the world. Okay, please. That's the second thing Mr. Roar is going to share here. The third thing that Mr. Roar is going to share is that you must have it in your mind and know that you must have a location independent business. What does that mean? But that means that what we're doing here does not require for us to have an office. It does not require for us to meet in any, any type of location. I'm talking, we're not even going to meet at a coffee shop. We're not doing all of that because we've got so much technology. I'm going to service you from wherever I am. And you are going to get this excellent service wherever you are. Okay. Again, internationally. I don't need you to come to Vegas. People come to Vegas because they, they want to be here in Vegas and we can do a VIP here in Vegas. We love the four seasons and we want to, you know, people love to gather and all that stuff. And that's all fine and good. But when it comes to the convenience of this business and how quickly you're going to be able to bring in revenue, you are location independent. You can do this business anywhere and you can service people internationally. Guess what? I have a product or a service that you need in your country. I, I may not speak the language, but guess what? I'm going to call the language line. Hello. I'm going to call the language line and I'm going to get an interpreter that speaks Hebrew. Yes, I am. I'm going to get an interpreter that speaks uh, Haitian French. Okay. I'm going to get an interpreter that speaks Spanish. Yes, I am. And we are going to conduct this business. And then I'm going to get somebody else to whatever, whatever documents, whatever you need. Oh no, we're going to have this thing together. You're going to see it in English. You're going to see it in Spanish. You're going to see it in English, you're going to see it in French. You're going to see it in English. You're going to see it in Hebrew. Yes, you are. Location independence. That's the third before Miss Aurora moves on to number four. The caveat to what we were just saying about location independence for all of the entrepreneurs who are doing e-commerce, you are shipping, you are shipping products. Okay. Let's, let's just know who's still going to be out there. Truck drivers, trucks, ships, things that come in internationally that can only come in by water, pilots, airplanes, things that come in internationally that will need to be flown. So we've got trucks, trains, things that come in internationally that have to be transferred by a, a, a freight train. Understand that, that if you are moving in an arena where you have to ship products, you need to have the ability to be able to conduct that e-commerce business from wherever you are, wherever you have to go. You have to make sure that you are partnering with other businesses internationally to get the things that you need because they're going to be being shipped via plane, train, truck, ship, hello, start, start really understanding the type of expansion that you're going to need to do right now at this time, right now, start doing the research seriously. Okay. The fourth thing, the fourth thing here 
is that you're going to have to adopt flexible corporate structures. We know that when you're moving internationally like this, if you are not set up in the proper legal structures, you are asking for some situations. And, and how, how is it that you're asking for situations? Well, we already know, because we talk about this a lot on this channel. Many of the entrepreneurs who come on board here at Aurora Day Consultant, I want to thank you. Okay. And many of you who are emailing, I want to thank you for emailing. Please continue to do so at info at auroradayconsulting.com. Okay. Let Miss Aurora know just how bad of a situation they've gotten into because they go to these bookkeepers. They go to these tax filers who really have no interest in assisting you create a tax plan who really have no, no, no thought to go and educate themselves further to find out how could I actually service this client who's doing international business. They don't have the knowledge and they don't have the information. And this is not a, you know, it's not, it's not a, 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 a stab at, at, at any, any person in these uh, careers or anything like that. I'm just telling the truth here that this is what we have to endure. These individuals who refuse to go and educate themselves further and don't even think about the fact that, no, this person actually needs real assistance. And maybe I'm not the person to help. Maybe I need to refer them to somebody. Maybe I get a little kickback from the referral, but I can clearly see this person is dealing, you know, in international things. I'm not really qualified to even help to create anything like this. Okay. And see what's happening is that you're operating out of the wrong legal entity to, to begin with. So your, your whole situation is off. The whole situation that you need to be in legally is not correct. So when you get to the person who's going to be handling your filings and your bookkeeping, they can't help you. <laughs> They're a mess. You're a mess. Your whole show is a mess. You can forget the lights, camera, and the action. Okay. Because it's, it's just not, it's not going to go well. So if you don't understand that you need to be operating in entities and legal entities that create anonymity and that assist you in building tax-free wealth legally, you're going, you're going to have some issues with seeing all of your profits, all of the profits that you should be seeing because of the, all of the hard work that you are putting into this business. Now that you are aware that you have to have a true indeed bona fide international business. The fifth thing that Mr. Aurora is going to point out here, and Mr. Aurora has discussed this before in a previous video, having a subscription based business model on the next level, because see what's happening now is that your subscription based model where people are paying you monthly for something, whether it be a product or a service, you've got to now know that you have to accommodate an international audience. Again, we're dealing with languages different currencies. You have to have the ability to receive Euro, Yen, Hello. This is it's serious. Okay. If you're, if you're not understanding that, that this whole nine to five situation for many industries is about to, I mean, it's going away. It, we know this. I keep saying, you know, you can't even order McDonald's. You have to put the app on your phone to order your stuff at McDonald's and then walk up in there. You see your number that they put on the little app. Uh, somebody going to bring out that little tray. There's nobody there at the register anymore. That's all that's been gone a long time ago. Okay. You have to see yourself the same way, the very same way. And the sixth thing that Ms. Roy is going to point out here is you embracing the gig economy in a way that you've never embraced it before. Many of these secured entrepreneurs, they would never think to get up on, I'm not going to name any of these things, but you already know where we're finding people, where we're finding people to do these little gigs. They are not thinking about getting up on any of these platforms to get gigs for what it is that they do. Now, I don't blame, I don't blame a lot. I mean, I hear what, what people are saying because there's so many people on these platforms and you really have to, you, again, for all of this, you have to market yourself. Like, let's keep it real. You're not just going to get up on any of these platforms and say, oh, somebody else, somebody else said they need my service. And, you know, no, you still have to market yourself. You still have to show up every day on social media 
and market yourself. And Mr. Warren's a, a strong believer. I'm still a strong believer in uh, publications. Okay, I'm still a strong believer in posting your ads in these uh, these magazines, magazines that you know people are reading. And you know, Miss Aurora is one of these people who still goes into a Barnes and Nobles and I sit right there on the bench and I pick out all these magazines and, and I'm doing it purposely to see who's placing ads in these magazines. There are a plethora of ads in these magazines that has not gone anywhere because there are still people who prefer to read a a physical magazine. They're not just doing it online, but, but even still, even if you place the ad in that magazine, the ad is still appearing on, in, in, on, in the online version. So let's, let's, let's get it together. Let's get it together. <laughs> okay. So that's what Miss Aurora wants to share in this video as it relates to what the entrepreneur needs to be doing right now to get ahead of this whole, your nine to five situation may be going away. And it may be going away before 2034 simply because if you've got an industry that we really don't need, really don't need anybody to, be, to, 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 to do all of that. We already know that if you call up certain places for customer service, you're not going to get a person from the United States. You're not getting a person from the United States. You're getting a person from maybe India. I've gotten people from Africa. Okay. Pakistan. Okay. You know, Cambodia. I've gotten people where it's like, okay, this is the Philippines. It's, it's kind of, you know, I need you to speak a little slower so that we can communicate with one another. Okay. Because these call centers are not, you know, we don't have too many call centers here anymore. Yet we got people saying, okay, start your call center. Okay. That's all fine and good. You're going to have to fight for a bid. You're going to have to fight to, 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 to get that thing together simply because they're getting the labor cheaper in other countries where there's a cheaper uh, cost of living and people can make $15 a month and eat every day. It's a very real thing. It's not a joke. Okay. So I want, I want all the secured entrepreneurs to comment below because this is an interactive community. Hello. <laughs> so you all know you can find me, Miss Aurora Day at AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time, ta-da.